Welcome to Steamworks. I'm Tim. This is Tim's Top Tool Tips. This is a Keats angle plate I bought from the internet. For the relatively low price, it's not a bad piece of kit. Most of the working surfaces are ground and the rest is covered in some sort of plastic paint coating affair. It does have one or two issues that, well, we need to resolve to make it a workable piece of kit. This area on the clamp is painted, preventing it being used the other way around. These areas, although painted, are probably covering a machine finished. The rest of it's not bad, being ground all over. However, there are some issues, as I mentioned earlier. This is a true 90 degree angle, and when offered up to the V groove, well, it wobbles a little bit. That means that the V is not exactly 90 degrees, which doesn't really matter in the scale of things. But what I don't want is the corner of my 90 degrees to locate in the corner of that V. It's the same result for the clamp as well. And there's a simple fix for this, and that's what we're going to do. It's not critical, but I'd like to clean up these bolting surfaces to make them both parallel to one another. As you can see, they're quite a way out. To solve the corner point, we're going to cut a groove. Just like this. This cutout allows room for the corner of a casting, ensuring that the flat faces are supported without it rocking. Without this, the corner would fit in the V and allow the casting to move during machining. I'm also going to add another little feature along the back of this, which I'll explain a bit later. The ground surfaces are surprisingly parallel. Here I'm going to machine some datums on the clamp. It doesn't really matter where they are, as long as they are all square and parallel to one another. Machining this face extends the range of sizes that the clamp can be used for. The bolting faces are then brought to the same height. The bar was then flipped over and the other side brought parallel. A quick check shows that the V groove is true to the new bolting faces. A wiggler is used to line up the mill to cut the slot in the bottom of the V. With a bit of patience, this is a very accurate method of lining up the mill.
The slot is cut with a 4mm slot drill. I'm taking it steady because I don't know if there's any hard spots left behind from the grinding process. We're going to give the main body the same treatment, but first I need to remove this coating. A direct attack with a knife blade gets me some of the way. But I had to resort to chemicals to get all the way down to the machine surface. A few rubs on a flat surface with carborundum paper gets a decent finish. A quick check and um, we can see it's quite square. I want to cut a slot down the middle and a flat on the back. So I'm making sure that this is parallel to the mill. Again, the ground finish is pretty good. The hard skin on the casting is not allowing me to cut this flat very well. I'll have to come back to it. I use the wiggler again to line up for cutting the centre slot. Again, very accurate. This is a half inch wide slot that I'm going to cut one eighth of an inch deep. I've mounted an angle plate again true to the mill. Here I'm recutting the flat along the back of the angle plate and you can see where I've filed away some of the harder parts. And now lining up the V again with the wiggler to cut the centre slot. I'm using the newly cut flat to locate the angle plate on the mill table. So that's it done. The clamp can now safely be used either way around, which extends the range of or size of material that I can clamp within it. So what's the slot for? So here we have an embryo eccentric sheave waiting for its offset hole. Adding this simple T-bar and bolting it in place securely allows me to accurately reposition the whole of the angle plate with respect to the center line. The T-bar needs to be fixed securely to make sure there's no movement at all when the angle plate is loosened for repositioning. Now that all is secure, it's simply a matter of loosening the angle plate. Repositioning using a gauge block then tightening back up to the faceplate.
the T-bar can be removed at this point and the eccentric hold board. Leaving the T-bar in position means that the angle plate can be moved back to its original position. This means that multiple parts can be made with identical dimensions. No need to faff about trying to line up a centre pop with the drill chub. I think this is a very, very useful feature.